testimony uh, that you heard tonight from Mr. Pennell, uh, not only that the impact that is that he foresees with this proposed use, not only is it consistent with what you would expect from a surface mining operation in Pennsylvania, but it's actually less, significantly less. So if you compare this proposal to greenfield development, where you had new infrastructure going in, new processing facilities, new roads, the impact from that site, everything else being the same, the impact from that would be greater than what we're proposing. I also said in the conditional use process, the legislative process, you come up with certain conditions that you feel need to be satisfied, must be satisfied, as a condition proceeded to approval. We've put on testimony tonight uh, that I believe satisfies all of those uh, objective requirements, as well as the subject um, I'd like to turn it over to you, and I basically have two questions. The first is uh, whether the supervisors are satisfied with the level of information provided in our application and the testimony you've heard tonight. And then the second is just general, is whether you have any questions for us uh, related to the application or the testimony. I'll let them speak for themselves. <clears throat> Bob, the question is posed, do you feel that they have uh, made a prima facie case here that satisfy the conditions that you know them to be? Uh, it appears that they have, uh, with the application, that they have followed the uh, ordinance uh, quite well. I'm sure some of the supervisors might have a couple of points of clarification. Um, one that I think of just as we were listening uh, uh, recently uh, in your presentation, gentlemen, um, when DCNR um, does the harvesting, I'm assuming all that is going to happen on site also. They're not going to be harvesting and coming out onto any of the existing roads and so forth. They'll be all in sight. Correct? Okay. Doug, do you have any questions? I have no questions right now. Um, the only question that I have right now is when we talk about the fauna and the historical study, that's being done during the permit process. Um, is that underway now? Uh, it, those studies uh, are underway and are at different levels of completion. Mark, will those reports be available to us prior to your permitting or as part of your permitting application? Yeah, it, it'll be concurrent. It will, um, we'll be able to get you those as they're prepared to be submitted to the EP. Okay. Not at this time. No questions. I think Mr. Gordon has a couple follow-up. Um, Mark, I think your firm, as I recall, has been providing studies on a regular basis on Tom's Creek. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. And, uh, we've been doing the uh, stream monitoring SGI uh, agreed to with DCNR, um, and we also have been doing you know, some of the preliminary investigations on the site, um, and some of the geological investigations, wetland delineations, and those types of things. I 
apologize if I missed it in the application, but I understand that the plan is to continue some type of monitoring of Tom's Creek? Yeah, SGI will continue. Uh, currently, uh, you know, we've performed what was agreed to, and that was an initial year of quarterly monitoring and an annual uh, monitoring event subsequent, and you know, SGI will continue that monitoring. Thank you very much. For how many years? Are you, are you going to... Is there a time frame that you're going to do the monitoring of the Tom's Creek? Um, the commitment in the um, in the DCNR letter was uh, five years like, total. I, I believe total is five. I, I apologize. Five years since the baseline. Yeah. So um, so SGI will. Obviously, continue through that period, and um, we'll have to do. There will be additional monitoring required on site as part of the DEP permit approval as well, both groundwater monitoring and um, surface water monitoring. So, SGI will continue monitoring um, as long as the, the northern track is active. Thank you. I don't, does anyone else have any follow up questions based on that? housekeeping measure. Uh, one of the, the things that we were talking about were the, the best management practices and the details that were given. Uh, a supplemental sheet was submitted to the township. Uh, we originally filed the application. Uh, a lot of the explanation was in narrative format talking about best management practices. We did get the comment letter from C.S. Davidson and they asked that we provide some details. So that supplemental sheet was provided to the township. I just wanted to make sure that that got included in uh, Board Exhibit A as part of the application. Um, and also uh, point out the fact that, that that comment, that conversation came up during the Planning Commission meeting, and the Planning Commission did recommend approval of this application during that meeting. That's all I have. Thank you. Okay, at this time, are there any adjoining property owners that are joined in the Northern Track that wish to ask SGI any questions or present anything that they wish to present regarding this application? And I know there was a lady that has a letter from Dr. Paolini. Okay. That's fine. And we'll receive, this is, this is a letter stating that uh, he wasn't able to make tonight's meeting and he's asking for continuance, but we'll make it part of the record. I guess this will be board exhibit, whatever we're up to. I think there were some individuals that came up to me prior to the uh, actual start of the uh, hearing that wanted to yeah, my, recognize. Yeah, my name is Brent Walls. You have I'm to come here. down. All right. Let's stay in. The, young, the court reporter needs to hear your name. Okay, please keep your name and address. Uh, my name is Brent Walls. I'm um, uh, Bunker Hill, West Virginia. I'm actually here representing several members in the area who are members of the Tone River Keeper and several members downstream. And I'm requesting an organizational standing because of that. I don't think that's appropriate. That's my advice. I would not deny that. Is anyone else wants to request party standing? Yep. Sure. Obviously, have no desire to limit anyone's right to free speech, public comment. It is what it is. I embrace it always. Uh, however, the question of party standing and status, uh, as having standing, I do need to object, and it really is a procedural matter uh, as well as a sort of a substantive matter. Uh, and I need to preserve that right, so I'm going to object to his request for standing. Thank you. Next, name and address, please. Thank you, Matt. My name is Lionel Whitcomb. I live at 2545 Mount Hope Road, and I would request to be a party to these proceedings based on the uh, relevance, the, the distance from my home to the proposed mining site. It's, it's exactly, well, it's approximately 
5,550 feet. Let's see what Mr. Delaney has to say. Hold on. Again, based on that proximity, um, I respectfully object to, uh, to standing on that, on that basis. And really the question is whether, uh, whether the gentleman's interests are different than that of the ordinary citizen and every citizen that you've been elected to represent. Uh, your duty is to protect those interests and my position would be that his interests are adequately protected by the board and that his proximity to the facility does not confer standing on him. I have to agree with that analysis as well. Is there anyone else that wishes to approach? Charles Mickley, I live at 2390 Mount Hope Road, approximately, oh, about 100 feet more than Lionel Whitcomb, um, and I would ask to be a party to these proceedings also, uh, based on my proximity um, and the visual effect that I can see directly over into your existing mine and have uh, extreme audible uh, circumstances at my property. my objection on the same grounds. And I would have to concur. Um, not having, is there anyone else that wishes to be recognized for party status? Name and address, please. My name is Sue DeVere. I live at 700 Iron Springs Road, which is two miles downstream on Tom's Creek. The front of my property is 900 feet of Tom's Creek. I own both sides of the creek so that I have to cross the creek on a little bridge to get to my house from the road. I'm uh, extremely concerned about stormwater management. I'm also very concerned about the creek quality. I have beautiful trout pools in the water that it runs through my property. Um, I brought pictures to share with the board if I am allowed to speak. Mr. Glenn. Sounds like a beautiful property. Uh, it is even further away, so I must object to her standing as well. But I want to reiterate what I said before, and that we are in no way trying to prevent anyone from making public comment and speaking during public comment. It's just a question of standing and party status. No, again, I concur with that. Well, wait a minute. We're going to we're going to get we're going to get to public comment section. So you'll you'll have a chance to address the board. At that 